You asked, what factors influence a solar panel's size and output? Right now, many of the residential solar panels for sale are around 400 watts, but travel back 20 years and they were 175 watts. From 175 to 400 is a significant difference in power class. It's a 128% increase. But how exactly did this get achieved? Was it an evolution in technology? Or really, are your average solar panels just getting bigger? It would be safe to assume that technological advancements are the main reason for this more than double increase in panel wattages. If so, will we see similar improvements in the coming decades? Environmental energy sources are expected to carry the weight of domestic energy needs as we transition to a more sustainable future. But right now, many residential roofs are just not big enough to support a solar system size needed to generate the electricity required for the entirety of a home's consumption during both day and night and the electricity used by these families' electric cars of the future. A more efficient solar panel would solve this problem. But what's actually interesting is that technology over the years has only increased solar panel power by about 41%. The increase from 175 watts to 400 watts over the past 20 years is primarily due to the average solar panel being 87% bigger. Therefore, a lot of the power class improvements are actually not an improvement at all. If the original 175 watt panels would be rebuilt to the size of today's panels, then they would have a power class of about 330 watts. So only the remaining 70 watt improvements are actually technological innovations. So Marcus, why don't you tell us how we got here? If we go back to 2005, 2006 and, and travel forward now to where we are now, we have seen a number of changes in solar panels in regards to the over technology, and the size of the uh, wafers, um, and I'd say be three or four different generations. So we started off with a relatively small panel of about 80 centimeter wide and about 1.5, 1.6 meter high. And they were only usually about 14, 15 kilograms, quite easy to handle. But the maximum wattage that you got out of those was about 175 to 190 watts. Usually uh, the cells in those panels, they were quite a bit smaller. They were usually around the five inch and you had 72 of them in the panel. So 72 small cells and you got only about 175 to 190 wattage. Then around oh, possibly 2010, 11, 12, we went to a larger cell and it was then this cell and that's about six and a quarter inch, around 16 centimeters all around and we changed it to go down to 60 cells. So we used to have 60 cell panels and those were in size about 160, but because now the cells were wider, um, we also made the panel wider and they became a bit heavier, 18, 19 kilos. We started with about 250 watts uh, and a polysilicon technology, and then we moved to monosilicon. Efficiency went as far as about 330, 340 watts. And those panels were a bit at 1.68, 1.7 by about a meter wide. Now, the trick is that the cells have become even wider again. So maybe the cell is actually as big as this whole plexiglass frame and now we can actually get 400, 410, 420 and even 470 watts out of the panel. But what really only happened is that the panels have become bigger and have become heavier. And they are not 60 cells anymore as they were with the second generation but they've been cut in half now to reduce the resistance and that has actually also increased efficiency. So now we actually have usually um, 120 or maybe even an additional row added. So we've got 144 cells. The cell has actually been cut in half, has gone bigger, but it's still also monocrystalline. In order to increase efficiency further, there's also now a new technology comes through, which is called N-type. So it's a different form of uh, silicon, which is again, a little bit more efficient. So in a really quick one, all we've done is made the panels bigger, made the wafers dash the cells bigger, have found some small efficiency increases. For example, here, one of them that you can see is we've increased the number of bus bars. So you see in this older style technology, you've got five bus bars and here now you've got 10 uh, bus bars. Now what that means is that the resistance 
per bus bar is lower and therefore you can get more electrons through. So that's kind of how the technology has evolved, but it actually hasn't had like a big revolution. It's just kind of little tricks that we tweaked on the corners. And that's why we suddenly gone from a 175 watt panel, which was smaller, to a 440, 450 coming up. But those things are damn heavy. And I actually feel for the installers because in the last 10, 15 years, they used to carry a 14, 15 kilogram panel up the roof. And now sometimes it's 21, 22, 23 kilos. That's, that's heavy stuff, you know. This is, uh... And that's quite a bit for a single person. So in many cases, you really need two installers to do the job and get it up there safely. Otherwise, they're really going to have a bad back. Want more Energy Answered? Visit yourenergyanswers.com for quality energy products, tools and calculators, and find your quality local installers. Please support the channel by liking the video, hit that subscribe button, and ring the bell, and check out all our other videos. You're still here? I'll see you next time. Bye.